Are you natural? Am I natural? You know, I get this question on, uh, you know, sometimes on my vi uh, YouTube video shorts, I'll get this question when I put up a, you know, a video of me, maybe just doing a little posing or a uh, little flexing. I um, have a TikTok account, so on there, yeah, I may put a, you know, a, a video from the gym after I work out, and I'll do a little posing or maybe just a little Flex Friday uh, stuff, right? And so this will pop up every now and again. Uh, somebody will put in the comments, are you natural, right? So this is an issue. Nad, there's a lot of Nad here, not videos, right? So I don't have a problem uh, addressing this or talking about it. I actually have a video uh, here on my my uh, channel that I'll I'll make reference to it here in a little bit, where I kind of speak about this issue in more a different context. So I'm 53 years old, five foot eight, and right now uh, about a 155 pounds. That's right. I'm not weighing a whole lot right now. Uh, by choice, I've been uh, focusing on on being lean, right? Staying lean, and and it's a uh, you know body composition's relative. So I'm 155, but you know I got uh, plenty of uh, relative muscle mass on my on my structure, right? So it's really how you carry what you have the the mu lean muscle mass. What is that body fat percentage breakdown? What how does it present, right? So there's a lot of lot of uh, caveats or context, if you will, and how you want to even look at, you know, the relevance of body weight, right? And, and then bone structure, how we carry muscle, et cetera. So that's a whole other video. Uh, it's bodybuilding, right? So it's kind of an illusion when you see someone, uh, how big you think they actually are. So if myself, yeah, five foot eight right now, 155 pounds, I've been heavier throughout my life. I've stayed uh, in my forties, I'd stay closer to about 165, 165 pounds by choice. And then if I competed in a bodybuilding contest, I would diet down, I would end up being at the weigh-in because I do my weight class um, about 154 or so. Now, what I'm doing now in my 50s, uh, because my longevity goals and health and fitness goals, I'm just staying relatively lean all all year round, right? 365 days a year. I'm not getting super crazy lean like I would for a, an MPC bodybuilding contest. It's not necessary. But because of how people can uh, carry... Uh, we carry body fat differently. So for my situation, because of, you know, my relative muscle mass to bone structure um, ratio, if you want to say ratio, right, or just how I uh, carry, how much muscle I carry on my frame, I don't have to get super lean in terms of us, the low body fat in order to look ripped uh, or have uh, that definition that people use the word ripped. So I still hear that right now. Oh, you're, you're ripped, right? People make that comment in my videos. So in a bodybuilding competition, like for the MPC, I could get down to a legit four to five percent body fat, as evidenced by DEXA scan, bod pod, and, and the skin fold, uh, skin caliper type test. So I know I've been that uh, low body fat before. So where I'm at with my current situation, I don't need to be that low body fat, but definitely look pretty shredded if I get that lean. So right now, yeah, I might be ten percent body fat, nine percent body fat. Or so, and that's that's pretty that's still pretty low, relatively speaking, to the general population for any age, much less a 53 year old man. So let's get back into the original question: Am I natty, natural? So I'm. I want you to use uh, some deductive reasoning skills, right? Deductive reasoning skills. Okay, genetics can play a role in it. Some people could just be completely natural, meaning they don't take anything to augment or. Uh, support their hormones like testosterone replacement therapy, for instance, or hormone replacement therapy. Some people might take things to help with human growth hormone, hormone like peptides, uh, for example. So there are people who do medically supervised uh, therapeutic amounts in terms of dosage of hormones, testosterone, or things of that nature. So could somebody be natural in their 50s and be as lean as me? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's possible some some men may just have naturally uh high levels of of uh, testosterone hormones that kind of maybe it just it stays with them for a, a long time right um and, and so how much of a role does that play in the ability to get ripped lean if you will uh how we build and carry muscle it definitely does make a difference it does make a difference in terms of uh, the anabolic response recovery talk about nitrogen balance right protein synthesis all that jazz that's a whole other subject matter you can do a whole video just about that. So my situation, I started lifting weights when I was 12 years old, almost 13. 
So I've been lifting weights, strength training for more than 40 years now. So think about that. Do the math. That's lifting weights longer than some of you here uh, maybe watching it or have even been alive, right? So that's a long time. So consistency. So let me speak to what I, the things I, nat I am naturally with, right? I've always been naturally motivated I've well, I've always naturally seen the value in physical fitness and working out. So because I always naturally was just inclined to see the value in it, I've always been mo motivated to prioritize it my whole life. I've been consistent with working out. So like I said, since 12 years old to now age 53. I would even say I'm naturally disciplined. I guess can a person be born naturally disciplined? Well, I suppose you can. I've always been disciplined in terms of how I organize and structure, whether it be lifestyle, having a reasonable, healthy balance, having a reasonable, healthy balance with things. So yeah, naturally disciplined, right? Uh, consistency, that's a powerful thing. Consistency is probably one of the most powerful things in terms of, of a lot of context. I always say that when you have a plan and you work a plan, time is on your side because you'll get there. I've also always said it's easier to stay in shape and maintain yourself than it is to let yourself go and get out of shape and then have to like get back in shape again. That can be be difficult. So the truth is we all make adaptations when you work out. The body gets stronger. You do, do improve your conditioning. And at a certain point, you're not going to just keep getting stronger and stronger and then forever because, yeah, we'd all be Superman if that was the case. I just get uh, infinitely, infinitely just keep getting stronger and stronger. So what actually happens is you're going to get as strong as you can. You're upper potential, whether, and then your full potential for body composition, muscularity, strength, uh, whether maybe it's an athletic goal, athletic performance, and so on. So once you achieve that peak, whatever that is, then you just do the best you can to stay as close to that for as long as you can to hold on to that for, for the rest of your, throughout the rest of your life. So for my situation, things like horizontal power, vertical power, explosiveness, uh, muscle mass. These things are like a savings account that I have that are protective factors that will help me with my quality of life. Explosive power, vertical power, agility, uh, muscle mass, strength. These are associated with having a, a, a better probability prognosis for longevity, uh, less issues with uh, mortality rates of accidental deaths, slips, falls, things like that, etc. So yeah, those are some of the things I'm, na I'm naturally inclined with motivation, right? I've naturally just gravi gravitated towards seeing the value in this to prioritize it. So, okay, so what maybe is not natural? Well, as I've mentioned in a, another video on my playlist, testosterone replacement therapy, which is legal, legal, right? Medically supervised. I do blood work every six months. So yes, I take medically supervised uh therapeutic dose of testosterone once a week, right? And I take this uh, with HCG, which is a, a protocol that you take it with testosterone. So this basically optimizes your own, your own production of um, testosterone, by the way, the HCG keeps it, keeps you from shutting down. In other words, your body continues to produce its own testosterone. Then the actual testosterone I'm taking itself, that's the extra, I guess you could say, the, if you want to say it's like supplementing my natural production that's still going on. So what is happening here? Well, the goal of this is to stay within an optimal upper range, right? Of what's acceptable on the 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 range for like lab work, right? So with lab corp, it kind of varies sometimes, but basically a total testosterone serum level not greater than a, than a thousand, so less than a thousand. Your testosterone free direct, right? If you're around 20, 21, that's within the range, but it's it's optimally high, right? that free direct and there's there's other things involved here too when you look at things like uh sex binding glomulin hormone i believe estradiol you look at that in terms of uh other hormones in the body your thyroid uh prostate specific androgen so if you do a complete male hormone panel they check all that stuff all my stuff's good by the way my psa has been less than a one not even a one it's been stable like that for probably 15 years and i measure this every six months as i mentioned so trt uh, even to the extent, maybe you might do some peptides uh, certain times during the year when you want to incorporate that. These are just to, well, the peptides, by the way, helps your body produce its own uh, human growth hormone. 
So it's basically your body being stimulated to make its own human growth hormone. So that's the difference between peptides versus a synthetic uh, drug, a bioidentical synthetic drug that they just, human growth hormone, where you just inject that stuff uh, into yourself. And it's, uh, I guess, bioidentical, right? Peptides are different. It just triggers, stimulates your body to make its own. You get the idea. So the testosterone, yeah, levels within an optimal range. That's the difference. It's not the same situation with people who are abusing uh, androgenic, anabolic steroids, other anabolic agents, chemicals, uh, drugs, if you will, that promote or create this anabolic response. So people like in the uh, IFB, IFBB Pro, professional bodybuilding, other professionals, uh, if you want to say sports, or just recreationally, right, gym rats that abuse uh, abuse excessive amounts of drugs. Yeah, their their testosterone levels are not even measurable. They're just way off the chart. They're way out there. So those individuals, that's a whole other situation. Someone on TRT is not abuse of drugs. It's not abuse of drugs. A typical, on average, TRT dosage, just from people I know who do it, it can be 80 milligrams per week, 100 milligrams per week, or 120 milligrams once per week. That's it. And there's different ways to administer it subcontinuously uh, twice a week. You break the dose down into two shots twice a week or just once a week intramuscularly. So it's all a context. So you want to compare this to the same thing as people that are abusing steroids. I say it's apples and oranges. Is it natural, meaning that your body would just be, produ be producing and having this op most optimal uh, hormone balance without some help? Yeah. Probably not going to happen. You're not going to get some natural supplements or over-the-counter or even food, if you will, that's going to help boost testosterone levels back to those equivalent of a younger man back when he was younger, right? Not going to happen. You need some uh, medical, something medically prescribed like TRT. So testosterone cypionate, right, by the way. That's what I take. So whether you want to think of that as natural or not, it's just a matter of opinion. Uh, the way I look at it, it's quality of life. Does the benefit outweigh whatever said risk? Well, that's an individual situation a person has to determine. So though this thus far in my life, as evidenced by uh, lab work, physical checkups, and everything else going on, yeah, it's clearly a, a benefit for myself. So I think you get the idea, right? Does the benefit outweigh the risk? So without going into too much details, uh, I'll refer you to the link below. I'm going to put in this video where I talk about uh, testosterone replacement therapy in my fitness, in my 50s uh, video series. So I will say this also in closing. Um, things that have nothing to do with whether you're natty or not or natural as far as like perhaps aesthetics is just how we carry muscle. That's really genetic, right? The shape of the muscles, the insertions, aesthetics, if you will. Uh, that's just, you're born with it, right? So I guess how you look aesthetically, that aspect of you is 100% natural in terms of, of that, right? There's no amount of weight training or special curl, if you will, that's going to to give you a bicep peak like Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, right? Genetically determined. Uh, the work ethic stuff I mentioned, consistency, discipline, et cetera, th those things are, yeah, have nothing to do with natty or not. I've seen a lot of people actually get on TRT, HRT, who did not have discipline, did not prioritize a reasonable way of eating healthy, didn't prioritize uh, working out, exercise, if you will, to not really get much of a the benefit, if you will, right? So it's not a magic bullet. So I think that's in my title of the video. I'll put the link below. TRT's uh, not a ma magic bullet. So anyways, I guess that answers my question for anybody who's curious if I'm natty or not. Does it need to matter, right? Does it really, does it really matter? Uh, well, maybe if you're 25, you're as old doing things you don't need to. Yeah, you're, you can see that person's cheating, right? They're cheating, perhaps. Even then, if everybody else was doing it, well, that's more the ethical, you know, philosophical question. Is it cheating if everybody does it? Well, just depends on how you interpret that subjective. If you're 53 years old, <laughs> yeah, and you're doing a therapeutic amount, prescribed amount of testosterone, supervised by a doctor, which is legal, Fit, fit in, in with an ethical context where the benefit far outweighs any risk. Is that doing something wrong? Is that bad? Is that cheating? Well, I would say, no, it's not cheating. It's not cheating any more than any other person who might take use a, a drug to improve the 
quality of life uh, for other issues. So anyways, my name's James Hunter. I like to make topics about uh, within wellness, whether it's physical health, mental health, sometimes other topics of concern. So if you like topics like this and maybe uh, other related areas uh, that I speak about, feel free to look at my playlist, uh, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Like the video. And I have uh, on my channel, you'll see a, a mixed bag of varied subjects. Hope everybody's having a good week and take care. Thank you.